Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabansi. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and we give you guys a fresh perspective on things. And I always see them. And today, we've got a pretty interesting show for you guys. But before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. So, as you guys know, uh, there was some pretty big news yesterday that um, came out of the NBA. Uh, there was a pretty big trade that went down yesterday, uh, sending Bradley Beal from the Washington Wizards and Chris Paul to I'm excuse, yeah, saying Bradley Beal from the Washington Wizards to the Suns and Chris Paul to the to the Wizards, right? Now I didn't really get too much into that into that trade. As a matter of fact, one of the people that works with us sent me over the article, uh, sent me over the news. I'd already heard about it, <clears throat> but I didn't really feel uh, like talking about it because I just didn't think that it was something that was really going to move the needle to be quite honest with you on our channel so i was like i'll leave it to other people to discuss it but i did post a, a comment on our uh community section where i said the sun just turned into brooklyn into the brooklyn nets west all offense no defense no depth just my thoughts uh yours and i think a lot of people a, a lot of people were agreeing uh with me i was going through the comments a lot of people agreed even some phoenix suns fans were like bro i i, I feel you on this one I definitely think that this team, um, this team is too top heavy and they don't have any depth. But with the new restrictions on the uh, the cap, teams are now most likely going to have to try to build their rosters with two stars, and then you're going to have to like try to find a way to fill your roster with role players instead of having three supermax contracts. I think teams are making it very very difficult to do that, and I think the NBA wants to make, put out put out a more competitive product. Where you don't have teams that are too top heavy. So if you have teams that elect to go for that three star, uh, three superstar lineup or whatever it is, you know that you're going to be giving a lot up. And in this case, you're going to be giving up, giving up a lot of depth. That's exactly what I saw with the Phoenix Suns uh, last year in the playoffs. Uh, they were very, very top heavy. They were playing their two stars above 40 minutes per game because they needed them to play because they didn't have a bench. They had no depth whatsoever. And I think they just did this again. Now, maybe what the Phoenix Suns may be looking at with these two stars is possibly staggering them. You know, having one guy or uh, figuring out a way to have at least one or two stars or their two of their three best players on the floor. But we'll have to see, right? Because you're still going to need role players. And guys that complement each other and guys that can also play defense, right? Um, that's going to be something that's that's very, very important. If you look at Bradley Beal, I believe he's a little bit undersized at the two. I think he's probably six foot four, if I'm not mistaken, six foot four, six foot five. But anyway, uh, that's what they said. And then I started hearing moments after that uh, trade rumors about Chris Paul potentially returning to the Los Angeles Clippers. And that news I was very, very intrigued by. So I kind of combed through the internet and I came across an article, article, excuse me, from CBS Sports that really delves into this, uh, into this rumor um, um, pretty extensively. But before we get into that, this video is brought to you by sponsor Aura, who's also the official sponsor of the T-Wolves. Do you know what the fastest growing crime in America is today? It's identity theft. Imagine trying to log into your email only to see that your password has been changed. Then you start getting weird notifications from your bank and credit cards only to find out that all of your personal and sensitive information has been totally compromised. If you think it can happen to you and your family, just know that in 2020, over 49 million Americans were victims to identity theft, costing them a combined $56 billion. That is why we are excited to partner with Aura, who is the sponsor of this video. Aura is the number one identity theft and financial fraud protection. Aura monitors the dark web and alerts you if any of your passwords and accounts have been breached. And funny enough, after using Aura, I discovered some of my credentials were floating around in the dark web, and the app showed me exactly when and where the breach happened. In addition, Aura allows you to set spending alerts and they'll notify you of any suspicious transactions. Aura is four times faster than any of its competitors in alerting you if someone is trying to open a credit card or obtain a loan using your name. And remember this, every 14 seconds someone becomes a victim of identity fraud. Don't let it happen to you. Now click the link in the description and try Aura for free for two weeks and see if any of you or your family's personal information has been compromised. Start your free trial at Aura.com slash Dreamers Pro. And when you try Aura, by using the link in the description below. Also know that you're supporting this channel. Thank you. So let me just get into this article here. Starts off with the headline, Chris Paul trade rumors Clipper, Clippers want reunion with veteran who is likely to be rerouted in Bradley Beal deal. By virtue of Sunday's blockbuster trade to send Bradley Beal to the Phoenix Suns, Chris Paul for now is headed to the Washington Wizards, but chances are Paul likely won't be playing in, the, uh, in Washington next season. According to Chris Haynes, the Wizards are a likely 
to reroute Chris Paul in a trade. And the Los Angeles Clippers are expected to pursue a reunion with the future Hall of Famer. Such a move would make mutual sense, assuming that Paul, in the twilight of his career at 38 years old, wants to continue pursuing his first championship rather than rent the last days of his NBA legs to a full-scale rebuild. Washington would clear Paul's money at 30.8 million, 30 million for next season off the books, and Paul would land on his feet as a potential starting point guard uh, next to Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. Not exactly great news for Russell Westbrook, who's an unrestricted free agent and would probably be a Clipper goner if Paul were to come on board. There are some other options out there, and basically this article goes on to say a few other things. So if you guys want the full breakdown of what this article had to say, you can go check it out at CBS Sports. So you heard what the article had to say there now. Here are my thoughts about this. I'm glad that I read this article because it addressed a particular point that I was wondering about, which was the Chris, uh, what is it, the Russell Westbrook aspect. As you guys know, the the Clippers picked up Russell Westbrook at the trade deadline, and um, he he really was able to give them a boost uh, and help them make a decent uh, kind of appearance in round one, especially after Kawhi Leonard went down. He played very very well for the Clippers, and I was wondering if they were going to acquire Chris Paul then what does that do to Russell Westbrook? And I think that I don't think the Clippers would be able to get both of those guys. <clears throat> in terms of fit, well, if obviously if Chris Paul was 30 years old, it would be the greatest fit in the world, right? Because Chris Paul does exactly what the Clippers need. Uh, he's a great outside shooter, great floor general, um, really knows how to run an offense, extremely, extremely, extremely uh, intelligent, uh, you know, puts guys in the position to, you know, to score. He's a pass first point guard, like a traditional point guard. And I think that would work wonders for what the Clippers uh, need. But in this particular case, the caveat is Chris Paul is 38 years old. And that's the drawback. Why? Because Chris Paul has an injury, excuse me, has a history of injuries, right? And um, given his, you know, his recent history of always being injured in the playoffs, it could be a situation where the Clippers go out and sign him and then he gets injured right at the moment you don't expect him to, right? Um, and that's the thing. Now, his age, yes, it's a factor, but I wouldn't pay too much attention to it because I've seen an old, uh, I've seen an older point guard <clears throat> play very well for a team and help them win a championship. And that was Jason Kidd, who really reinvented his game, became an outside three-point shooter and was not a floor spacer when he first came into the NBA but was an extremely, extremely intelligent point guard who could rebound, who could assist the ball, and most importantly, who could also play defense. And he helped D Dirk Nowinski and those guys win a championship, and he was at an advanced age. So the thing about Chris Paul is really his health. That's really the question, and I think that's the gamble the Clippers will be taking if they go after Chris Paul. If you look at everything else, he's an excellent pickup because that's the one problem area for the Clippers. I think he's a better fit for them than um, Russell Westbrook, possibly, although Russell Westbrook has a lot of energy, he plays with a lot of energy, a lot of intensity, and he seems to get along really, really well with those guys in the locker room, which is also very important when we're grading when we're grading um, uh, chemistry, because chemistry is definitely part of the puzzle. Um, so we have to wait and see. I think that if they find a way to keep both Russ and Russell Westbrook, that'd be great, but I don't know how they're going to do that. But in terms of just a general fit, if we don't factor in injuries, then it's a great it's a great pick. I mean, some may say, but wait a minute, if you're going to be so focused on injuries, then uh, why even play basketball? Because Kawhi Leonard could get injured at any time. Paul George can get in, injured at any time. Sometimes you need luck on your side. And that's a very good point. All right. That's a very good point and is well received. So we have to wait and see. But if this news is true, I think the Clippers should probably find a way to pursue him and then figure out the Russell Westbrook thing next. So the question to you guys is simply this. Should the Clippers go after Chris Paul? over Russell Westbrook. Whatever you guys think, leave your thoughts in the comments and we catch you on the next show. Peace.